Hello guys and welcome back to Scholars. I am Gaurav and I am here to take you through the ancient history for your civil services examination. So let's just get on with our next topic that is the Indus Valley Civilization. Indus Valley Civilization, how this civilization grew, how this became such a big civilization that it covered entirely northwest frontier of the Indian subcontinent will be our subject matter of this class. We studied how the Chalcolithic people in search of copper varied to so many places and started a culture known as Chalcolithic culture which developed into a civilization which came to be known as Indus Valley Civilization. So let's just get on with our class and Indus Valley Civilization. So the term Indus Valley Civilization was first time used by John Marshall. This civilization is also known as Harappan Civilization, Bronze Age Civilization and few scholars also call it the first phase of urbanization. It was known as Harappan Civilization because the first city to be discovered was Harappa. It was located on the bank of river Ravi. It was known as Bronze Age Civilization because bronze is the first alloy to be used. It was made up of two metals, copper and tin. Out of these two, copper was the first metal to be discovered and used. Few scholars also call it the first phase of urbanization. And why it is so? Because it was the first time when the world witnessed large urban centers which were planned. It was discovered in the year 1921. That is, in the year 1921, the city of Harappa was discovered and so was the civilization, Harappan civilization. In 1922, another large city, Mohenjadaro, was excavated in Larkana district of Sindh, Pakistan, under the supervision of R.D. Banerjee, that is, Rakhal Das Banerjee. So, now just look at the question of where and when this civilization arose. So this civilization arose in northwestern part of the Indian subcontinent. It extended as you can see in the map, it extended from Jammu in the north to Gulf of Khambat, that is where the Narmada estuary is in the south, from Markan coast in Baluchistan to Meerut in the east. It was biggest among the contemporary civilizations. So now the question arises, who were these contemporary civilizations? They were Mesopotamia, and Egypt. Though there are differences in the exact period of IVC, but 2350 to 1750 BC is the most probable period. That is, in between 2350 to 1750 BC, this civilization was in its mature phase and was flourishing. So I hope all the points are clear. Let's just take a quick recap. The term IVC, that is the Indus Valley Civilization, was first time used by John Marshall. This civilization is also known as Harappan Civilization because the first city to be discovered was Harappa. It was located on the bank of river Ravi. This city and the civilization was discovered in 1921. This civilization is also known as Bronze Age Civilization because bronze was the first alloy to be discovered and used. It was made up of two metals, copper and tin, and the copper was first metal to be discovered and used. This civilization is also known as first phase of urbanization because it was the first time when the world witnessed large urban centers which were planned. In 1922, Another big city of Mohenjadaro was excavated in the Larkana district of Sindh, Pakistan by R.D. Banerjee, that is the Rakhal Das Banerjee. It arose in northwest frontier of the Indian subcontinent. It was biggest among the contemporary civilization and its period is between 2350 to 1750 in which it was in its mature phase. So if you see an option of 2500 to 1750, that is also correct. That different books claim different period, but that is why I have given the most probable period. But somewhere around little bit up or down chalta hai matlab there is no nothing to worry about now how this civilization developed into such a big civilization which was biggest among the contemporaries this did not happen in a phase of one or two three decades 
as we have learned its period of uh, mature phase how this civilization grew to be such a big we we'll learn about this in this slide the harappan civilization developed in a phase manner to be precise there were four phases the pre harappan stage early harappan stage mature harappan stage and the later harappan stage pre harappan stage in this stage nomadic people began to lead settled agricultural life so as i have mentioned earlier whenever we hear about the word agriculture in prehistoric period or the ancient history we attribute it to a settled life because people do not just abandon their land in search of food because nomads used to roam around in search of foods and when they started practicing agriculture it gave them a stable source of food so the nomadic people started living a settled life in pre harappan stage then they progressed towards early harappan stage where they witnessed gradual growth of town the transition from rural to urban life now the people started growing crops started practicing agriculture they built a community around this and this community soon transformed into rural life which took shape into urban life all this happened in early stage mature stage in this stage great cities emerged like mohenjodaro harappa kalibangan all these cities were prevalent and flourishing in the mature stage the whole civilization was developed there was robust town planning good trade and agriculture all this was practiced in mature harappan stage then came the later harappan stage which signifies the demar the decline of indus valley culture since their script has not been deciphered and we have multiple theories about the decline of indus valley it's not sure how the decline happened so let's move on now let's just take a look at the significant features which made this civilization the biggest and which made this civilization stand apart from rest of the contemporary civilization first and the most striking feature of this civilization was its town planning and its big structures so let's get on with town planning the great system of town planning was followed the roads used to cut each other at 90 degree and the town was divided into many blocks as you can see in this image these roads are cutting each other at 90 degrees they are divided into blocks there was an extensive use of bricks to be precise burnt bricks more than any other contemporary civilization so it's not that the other civilization did not knew the use of burnt bricks in mesopotamia we see that burnt bricks were used but they were not as extensively used as they were in indus valley in egypt we mainly find the use of dried bricks no burnt brick was found in egyptian civilization the city was divided into two parts that is the citadel and the lower town you can see in this image this raised platform which is surrounded by walls this part is known as citadel and the rest is known as lower town harappa mohenjodaro has its own citadel it was possibly occupied by ruling class below citadel is the lower town containing brick houses possibly occupied by common people so as you can see these houses these houses used to have courtyards and these courtyards were connected to the drains which was another most astonishing feature of this this valley civilization they had a proper drainage system these drains were covered with burnt bricks and they were equipped with manholes these courtyards used to carry water from the backyard to these drains and these drains used to carry water out of the cities now what these drains signifies these signifies the how much emphasis they laid on health and cleanliness uh, some scholars also claim that the cities of indus valley were uh, liable to frequent flooding and that is why they were provided with this drainage system this robust drainage system few scholars also claim that these drains were uh, as deep as 6 feet so i hope every point in this slide is clear to all of you let's just move on now coming to the structural part Mohenjo-daro was extremely rich in structure. It has the two of the most biggest structure of Indus Valley civilization, that is the Great Bath and the Great Granary. Great Bath was present in the middle of citadel. It was probably used for some kind of ritual bathing. Its dimension are 22 into 7 into 24. Now, one of the point to be noted here, which is the most important point, is no use of stone in great bath as you can see in this image on the right side this is the great bath and you can see the whole structure is made up of burnt bricks and there is no use of stones even the floor and the side walls are made up of burnt bricks there were adjacent rooms these are the adjacent rooms they were meant for changing clothes water was drawn from a large well located in adjacent room this floor was provided with the drainage system at one corner so that the water which was collected can be let out though its dimension are not very important from your prelims point of prelims or mains examination but uh, can be asked in your other state examinations or uh, state civil services but it's okay if you don't remember that uh, anyways i have rounded up 
off so that it is easy for you to learn another great building of this uh, ancient uh, civilization was the great granary it was the largest building of indus valley it was present in mohenjo daro it was around 46 meter long and 16 meter wide six granaries are also found at harappa we come across brick platform which form basis of two rows of six granaries so this is the raised brick platform which formed the basis of two rows of six granaries to the south of granaries at harappa lay working floor consisting of circular brick platform which was meant for threshing grains evident from the wheat and barley found in the cervix of the floor now what is this cervix this cervix are the openings that is the crack in the floor from where we have found wheat and barley so that is how we have concluded that these circular platforms brick platforms were meant for threshing grains now these granaries are also noticeable at kalibangan these shows granaries were important because it was present in mohenjo daro they are present in harappa they are present in kalibangan so they must have been very important for the indus valley people let's just take a quick recap mohenjo daro was extremely rich in structure it had two most important structure of the indus valley civilization that is the great bath and the great granary the great bath was present in the middle of citadel it was probably used for some ritual bathing no stone was used in great bath it was wholly made up of burnt bricks there were side rooms for changing clothes and water was drawn from the large well located in adjacent room great granary the largest building of indus valley civilization was located in mohenjo daro now six granaries are found at harappa we come across brick platform which were formed which form the basis of two rows of six granaries we also found working floor consisting of circular brick platform which was meant for threshing grains evident from the wheat and barley found in the cervix granaries are also present at kalibangan which shows granaries were important so let's move on agriculture now indus valley people as we have discussed were trading communities they were predominantly agricultural community so what made this community an agricultural community it was located in the region of indus and the supporting rivers and that land was very fertile because of all the silt and loam brought down by the indus which supported the agriculture so just as the nile supported the egypt indus river supported the indus valley civilization this region this sindh region which is comparatively rainless today it was very fertile in ancient times it is evident from the prosperous villages and towns that grew in the indus valley to be urban centers and that is how we conclude that it was a very fertile land in ancient india the indus region possesses more natural vegetation which attracted more rainfall these natural vegetation used to supply timber fuel for baking bricks and for construction activities now the question arises what did they produce they produce wheat barley rye and pea we also found remains of rice at lothal see this question has been witnessed many of times that where have we found rice remains students so take a note of it that rice remains have been found at lothal there are also evidences of cultivation of mustard that is sarso now furrows found at kalibangan shows that wooden plowshare must have been used and stone sickle may have been used for harvesting crops now what are furrows you must have noticed that at the time of sowing the field is jotna jise hum kehte hain field ko to field jab joti jati hai to usme chote 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 सेक्शंस बन जाते हैं लाइंस बन जाती हैं, तो दैट इज कॉल्ड फरोज तो वो फरोज दे आर डिस्कवर्ड एट कालीबंगन सो इट इज कंक्लूडेड दैट अ वुडन फ्लो शेयर मस्ट हैव बीन यूज फॉर मेकिंग फरोज एंड सिमिलरली वी हैव फाउंड अ स्टोन सिकल यू कैन सी दिस स्टोन सिकल इन दिस इमेज ऑन द राइट साइड एंड दिस स्टोन सिकल मस्ट हैव बीन यूज फॉर हार्वेस्टिंग क्रॉप नाउ द इंडस वैली पीपल वर द फर्स्ट टू प्रोड्यूस कॉटन अ कॉटन क्लॉथ हैज बीन फाउंड एट मोहन जदारो it is very important to note that it was found at mohenjo daro take a good note of it a cotton cloth was found at mohenjo daro the greek called the cotton sindhon and this is why the region which produced this sindhon in greek came to be known as sindh in modern times now we knew that the major urban centers of indus valley civilization had granaries so this food grains were stored in granaries probably cereals were received as taxes from peasants as stored in the granary for payment of wages now how do we know that these were stored in granaries and used to be as a payment of wages it is analogous to mesopotamian culture because this is what used to happen in mesopotamia canal irrigation was absent that is the channelization of water to the agricultural field was absent crops were totally rain fed they were sown and harvested at the mercy of rain so i hope every point in this slide is clear why the indus valley civilization is called the gift of indus now can we answer this question 
what were the agricultural produce that they used to cultivate stone sickle wooden for over used so they were the first to produce cotton cotton traces have been found at mohenjadaro food grains were stored in granaries and canal irrigation was absent so let's move on to our next part that is the technology and craft they used the tools made up of stone but they were also aware of manufacturing of bronze and the use of bronze now see the bronze used to be a very exclusive thing in the indus valley civilization it was not like any other stone tool or wooden tool that we witness in the era in the indus valley and the period before so since bronze was an exclusive thing so bronze smith must have constituted an important group in the indus valley civilization so this is what we have concluded that the bronze smith constitute an important group because bronze was exclusive and it was not easily and cheaply readily available a copper was obtained from khetri mines in rajasthan's jhunjhunu district and tin was obtained from afghanistan both of these metal were smelted to produce bronze so we know this that the copper was obtained from khetri mines because we have gone through the impurities found in copper and they were similar to those found in the copper obtained from khetri mines of rajasthan they produced tools utensils images of bronze apart from stone tools you can see these images these are the weapons or uh, tools made up of bronze now we have witnessed the huge structures like the great bath the great granaries all of these structures were made up of bricks so bricklaying must have been an important craft in the indus valley civilization so this is how we have deduced that bricklaying was also an important craft now people were aware of gold silver copper brass bronze and tin take a good note of it gold silver copper brass bronze tin you can witness any of the metal or uh, they can ask you which of these was not present in indus valley civilization or point out the metals which were used in the indus valley civilization so just remember these all six metals uh, that they were present in indus valley civilization now they produce jewelry of gold silver and precious stone they were expert in bead making and some books also claim that they well uh, they also wore amulets on their arms so it was uh, concluded that some also deduced that they used to wear amulets to ward off evils um, but uh, there is no conclusive evidence of that so let's just take it as a theory you can see in the image on the right side the jewelry of indus valley it looks quite good so they must have mold for producing it i think now moving on potter's wheel was in full use now potter's wheel when we hear the word wheel we can also conclude that the new potter's wheel the wheel would also have been used in making bullock carts so we'll study about it in the coming slides so just take a note of it that they knew how the wheel worked and potter's wheel was in full use these people are known to have constructed the world's first tidal port at lothal now very important from the technological point of view that these people constructed a port at lothal so the trade must have also been carried out via sea routes and the port at lothal is an evidence of it now let's just take a look at how the trade and commerce used to be carried out now this uh, indus valley community they were predominantly trading community now how can we conclude that because we have found more seals in indus valley civilization than the weapons and that is why we say they were primarily trading community so what they traded in how they traded is the subject matter now their economy was based on agriculture and trade they carried out considerable trade in stone metal shells etc the internal trade was carried out within the civilization various part of civilizations the foreign trade was conducted mainly with the contemporary civilization of mesopotamia and egypt now how do we come to know that the trade was conducted with this foreign civilizations we have found indus valley seals in mesopotamia and egypt gold copper tin and several semi precious stone were imported and various agricultural products were exported and since they were based on agriculture various agriculture products must have been exported and the precious gold copper tin and several precious stone must have been imported it seems that the harappan people exported some of the cosmetics used by the people of mesopotamia it was mentioned in some books so it was worth mentioning that we can conclude that cosmetics was known to them so they must have traded in cosmetics also trade was of barter type we do not found trace of any currency and coin though they were aware of metal they did not produce any currency and that is why we can say the trade was of barter type now how this trade was carried out it was carried out via bullock carts and oxen via land route and boats and ships were used for trade via sea routes so i hope everything is clear in this slide let's just take a quick recap the economy was based on trade and agriculture they carried out trade in stone metal and shells internal trade was carried out within the civilization 
foreign trade was carried out with mesopotamia and the other contemporary civilization the evidence of this can be found in indus valley sea which are found in mesopotamia gold silver tin and several precious stones were imported and agricultural products were exported because they were predominantly an agricultural society harappan people used to export some cosmetics to the urban met people of mesopotamia trade was of barter type because we do not found any currency in the indus valley period or uh, from the remains of indus valley bullock carts and oxen were used for land transport and boats and ships for river transport so let's move on to the next feature that is the political organization see you can see this blank space over here this is because we have no clear idea of how the political organizations used to operate in indus valley or were there any political organization in the indus valley this is because the script of indus valley has not been deciphered now the indus people were more concerned with commerce with conquest because we found more seals than weapon since they were more concerned with trade we can say that the city was divided between two class a ruling class or merchant class must have been the ruling class and the labor class so the merchant class was ruling class now who constituted this labor class these were agricultural laborers masons or the coppersmiths these were important classes but still constituted a labor class and they used to live on the outskirts as we have discussed the higher class used to occupy the cities and the lower class lived in the outskirts so let's just now take a look at a few questions and are you able to tackle them head on now indus valley people commonly use the following metals or alloys gold silver copper brass bronze iron choose the following option from the code given below now uh, you can take a few seconds to analyze an answer so now let's get on with it it's a very easy question we all know that iron was not known to the people of indus valley so we can easily answer this question by eliminating option 6 now were the rest of the metal known to the indus valley people yes they were especially bronze and brass they were known to the indus valley people so 1 2 3 4 and 5 so option a is the correct answer so let's take up another question the evidence is related to the farming tools equipments used by the in 